Figure out where to place you. You're good. Hey, thanks everybody for joining us today. Live Music Nation Podcast Festival Edition. I'm your host, Jake Hill. Today we're with Christina Trung. She has a number of events. We're going to highlight their fall event this year. Christina, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Thanks so good. much hey, for having me. Give us a little background on you. Where'd you grow up? Talk just a little bit about your uh, your family and your, your career. Sure, absolutely. I grew up in Houston, Texas. Still here. Um, I have a background in large-scale wine and food festivals is where I originally started in the event space. Realized I had a really great um, niche and sponsorship strategy, so I represent brands and festivals, um, activating various brands like Coca-Cola inside, you know, where they have engagement. Um, and then I went into more culinary events and then went independent in 2017. Um, so I carry a portfolio um, and a variety of uh, different properties, festivals, events, culinary, non-culinary, music, and so forth. All right. All right. So let's jump into your fall event. What was the name of that again? Chef, chefs for Farmers. Chefs for so Farmers. Chefs for Yes. And so basically it incorporates several different restaurants, both in the Dallas and Houston market. Um, and it supports uh, U.S. agriculture. So we align a restaurant with a farm um, and then we source produce and products from them. And we incorporate that into a two day festival full of dinners, lunches, um, you know, culinary, any type of aspect on the educational side. And it's all really meant to bring back uh, focus and highlight of U U.S. agriculture. Perfect, perfect. I ask these next three questions because that's really what people want to know. They want to know what it looks like, what it smells like, meaning food, and what it sounds like, meaning entertainment, environment, activity. So let's go through those three. Sure. What it looks like is picture a two-day um, outdoor event multiple tents with variation of brand activation showing showcasing what aligns well sustainability agriculture how it can be used in the everyday household um, and music um, lots and lots of uh, focus brands that want to be in front of consumers to educate and show why this is such a great event and why it has been for over the last few years um, what it smells like is amazing. We're talking about 20 plus restaurants at times, all cooking, um, all utilizing various flavors and, and just really looking to, to catch your taste buds in various elements. Um, and your third question was? Sounds. Sound. Well, Sound and activity, yeah. Yes. So think of it as like Food Network chopped on steroids. <laughs> um, so lots of cooking, lots of, you know, interactive um, methods of cooking, you know, everything from smoking to grilling, sautéing, you know, all those kind of ASMR sounds that people love um, are all incorporated here and all provide that kind of look, taste and touch element uh, for a really engaging experiential event. What is, what is your, well, I guess, how'd you find your niche? How did you how did you find this as your role for these communities? Um, I found my niche actually working for a large scale production company here in Houston, who produce about ten large scale events every year. Um, and I really started from the bottom. I learned everything from you know full on production from the ground up, um, and then I realized I had a very um, um, nice asset, I guess I would say, in being able to align brands with an event and to see where their uh, best market would be or where their best direct-to-consumer reach would be to showcase their products. Um, from there, I worked for another company out of Dallas, worked more nationwide uh, festivals and events, conferences, uh, doing pretty much the same thing, just not necessarily in food and beverage, but all over, everything from real estate to music and so forth. And then I realized, you know, I kind of hit that age in my life where I was like, well, I need to see if I can do it on my own. And this is the time for me to do it. Um, and so I went independent and I've been grateful ever since and very thankful that I've been able to carry myself along with other projects. So perfect. What What's the most rewarding part for you? Uh, helping people. I work with a lot of launch brands and I've... Um, it's funny that you asked that because I've recently tried to assess that myself. Like, what is the give back here for myself? You know, and meaning that I feel the best when I'm helping somebody 
Um, and I didn't realize that when I was younger. Uh, so now <laughs> um, I have realized that it's, it's just a means that I'm using something that I have, I am good at naturally. Um, and I'm able to help brands and, um, you know, mom and pops, especially during COVID, it came into, um, I think, a, a really great benefit to a lot of people that I worked with and being able to kind of pivot very quickly, find the correct strategies um, and the right properties to move to, you know, whatever that, that strategic kind of plan is. So consulting and, and being able to find a solution and be the, the problem solver for that, a lot of people to help yeah, alleviate no, those kind of stress. Great. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, a couple fun questions. A couple fun questions. Sure. I'm in live music, live entertainment, so I always like to survey the nation. This is just personal to you. What's the best concert you've ever been to? Best concert I've ever been to? <laughs> I'd actually be with my mother. I've been fortunate to be able to take her. She's 80 now. Um, so I'm proud to say that we've gone to three Andres Bocelli concerts. Oh, wow. Uh, both in Dallas, yeah, and in Houston. Um, and so, yeah, that's really where where um where i found it to be the most uh inspiring you know okay. and it's been nice to share those moments with my mother all right second question is a little double-sided okay um sure. dead or alive you could bring one musical act you could see one musical act now the first one would just be for you if you could see one musical artist dead or alive who would it be and then i'll ask you the same question but this time you get to gift it to one of your festivals so gifting something to your festival who would you give as a gift Gifting to the festival, I would gift over Tina Turner. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think she's going to be my answer to both of those questions. Um, and for multiple reasons, both personally, um, and I think she's just one of those icons um, that allowed us into her life in a special way and then be able, you know, especially for a lot of women to be able to relate to and to be able to see her overcome that in the various chapters of her life or the, you know, various acts you know well into her third act of her life you know very motivating she's a great speaker was willing to share her story you know um and to know that her really, really big comeback in her 40s i think would mean a lot you know to a lot of women um these days i think you know we we kind of get stuck in that stereotypical kind of box of what the what our lives should be and i think slowly that's evolving um and i think it's it's a great example so yeah that would actually be my my answer to both Okay, that's perfect, perfect. I've been a little selfish. I've asked a series of questions, haven't given you a chance to ask a question. This is a chance for you to ask me a question. What would you ask me? Um, I would ask you what, why the interest in, in having people in the F&B industry on your, on your podcast? Well, because you guys are hands-on. You're on the ground, you know? Um, a lot of time execs or, or um, just on the financial side, the recruitment, the sponsorships and the things like that. But you guys are, you guys are on the ground. And um, usually when we play a venue, we interact more with the F and B than we do um, really anyone else because they're there early, you know, they're setting up, they're, uh, they're there late, they're talking. So when our downtime happens to be the same time that they're active in the, in the facility. And so that, that'll probably be the reason that I find it interesting. Um, we, we really focus on, on that avenue as possible. So great question. How do people find out Thanks. more about your events and not just this one, but, but more and, and the other ones that you have going on? Yeah, definitely. Um, I normally direct people to reach out to me directly. You know, it's just Christina at openlockmarketing.com. C-H-R-A-S-T-I-N-A at Open Lock Marketing. Um, I like interacting with people directly rather than just an inquiry form. Um, we obviously do have a website. I have social media. Um, my handle's at HTownTina. So I do representation from everything from restaurants, launch brands, halls, corporations, and visual artists. Very good, very good. All right, well, thank you for joining us. I appreciate the information. And uh, sounds like you definitely have a unique thing going on there. So that's kind of cool, very cool. Thank you. And thank you so much for allowing me to be on. Hey, no problem. Well, baby, I'm on with a follow -up.